they could call themselves Messiah. Their titles, big titles. There was one uh, called Messiah Melchior Father Undeto. <laughs> I mean, titles. Another one was even called Jehovah. Why do you They also go by the names of chief apostle. You know, names that are not even in the Bible. There's a bishop in the Bible, yes, but there's an archbishop. An archbishop is a bishop with an arch. <laughs> but you have titles like chief apostle, archbishop. Sometimes they go further, they call themselves prophets. When titles become more important, think twice. Number three, they have other books that they read that seem to have more weight than the Bible. Normally a cult teacher has the Bible and another book, and that other book has more authority. And they would believe, they would believe that book than the Bible. And the book is normally authored by the founder. Next, they could also be having tapes and books they give. Either they sell them or they give them free of charge. <coughs> Never Sunday or Saturday, people listen to the tapes of the founder. And read books by the founder. If you have your Bible, lift it up and say, this is my Bible. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, there's no book like this one here. <laughs> Another mark of a cult is uniformity. Uniformity. Everyone must be uniform. You think the same way, you talk the same way, you walk the same way. You dress the same way, the same color of cloth, the same length of the skirt, just uniformity. All of us must be the same. In fact, if you look at a member of the cult, when you meet them in town by their dress, you can know them. Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them, but for them, by their dress code, you shall know them. Uniformity. The key word is uniform. Jesus doesn't want you to look like me because you are not a photocopy. You are you, I am me. Another mark of a cult is they refuse to allow you to think. They just, you don't think, here we are led by the Spirit and the Apostle, the Prophet, the Father, he thinks on our behalf. You'll go to some cults even a professor does not think. And that's where you find in a, a church that will not tell you. People are told to come to church, everybody carrying a snake. Yeah. And the people look for snakes and carry snakes into the church. And you also know that uh, some churches, you know, people it's not thinking people eat grass on a... A fellow... I mean, it's so funny. People just don't think. I saw on social media another guy baptizing people. Not using water, but using cork. <laughs> and I saw very nicely dressed people there. Being baptized under cock. In some churches, they drink snake fluid. People are not thinking. I saw somebody being raised from the dead, and they had a mobile phone in the coffin. And this guy died and went to the grave with a, a mobile phone. 
But when you die, my brother, you don't need a mobile phone. We, you need to leave it behind. They just forgot to remove it. People just don't think. Another mark of cults is ritualism. Ritualism. Rituals. Holy anointing oil. Being sold in church. Well, the Bible says that we use anointing oil in the church only for those who are sick. I challenge you to convince me otherwise. Then we have holy water. Somebody says, I got this water from River Jordan. Actually, I went to Israel at the exact place where Jesus was baptized. Where, where, this is where the water came from. And if you drink it, you will see miracles. The same anointing oil. We have a prayer cloak that you put on when you are praying and God will answer all your prayers. Cults also gravitate around somebody. He says, these things will happen. Give me five minutes, I close. And he gives Timothy, verse 10 to verse 17. He says, so Timothy, you man of God, you man of God. Timothy is the only person in the Bible that Paul ever called the man of God. But you, man of God, will you touch your neighbor, smile with them, shake their hands and tell them, but you, man of God. Well, I thought you guys understand the English. If she's a lady, you cannot say you man of God. Eh? Okay, now correct all your mistakes. Look at your neighbor and tell the good to them. But you? Three times shake your hands and address them as men or women of God. If you're here and you're sure and you're sure that you're sure, that you're sure and you're sure that you're sure, that you're sure, and you are sure that you are a man or a woman of God, clap your hands and scream! <laughs> if someone has a high five, you are a man of God! Ah, 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 Man of God, I'm not hearing women of God. Let's start here. One, two, three. All the men here, can you shout at the lady said, You women of God, you woman of God. Say again. And all the ladies, will you go ahead? You man of God. Give Jesus a hand. I'm summarizing three sentences only. Number one, it tells him, stay on the word. Stay on the word. He tells him the importance of scriptures, and then he urges him to stay on the word. Read it, study it, meditate on it, day and night. Stay on the word of God. Stay on the word of God. Don't go into it. Stay on the word of God. My God. Eat the word. 
And then thirdly, he says, they will preach other things, but you, Timothy, preach the word. Stay on the word, eat the word, preach the word. Stay on the word, eat the word, preach the word. Say again, stay on the word. Say it again. Now, the word of God is like chewing gum. Big sheep. Buy it. So never get a free buy buy yours. You buy big sheep, you chew it, you chew it, and some of the juice. And whatever remains of the big G, if you are a naughty from two, you throw it on your neighbor. If it lands on their hair, they will never remove it. It will stick. Chew big G, swap the juice, whatever remains, throw it on your neighbor. The more you chew the big G, the more it sticks. If it is not well chewed, if you throw it, it will fall down. But if you chew it until it changes the color, if it sticks, and let me tell you, the more you chew God's word, so that's the same with God's word, take God's word, chew it, swallow it, whatever it means, throw it on a neighbor, it will never leave them. Even if they say no, they are going to get born again. Is there anybody this morning? You're saying, Brother Elisha, I want to be a man and a woman of the world. I, I know there are so many wrong teachings going on in the world. I want to read the word, I want to swallow the word, I want to live the word, I want to share the word. And I'm dedicating myself that when my colleagues will go astray, I want to remain on the word of the Lord all the days of our lives. I don't know whether somebody wants to make a covenant with God, but all the days of my life, I'll be a man and a woman of the word. Let's bow down our heads and that is you, you raise your hands. Close your eyes if that is you. And you can raise your hands. Jesus is here. I give you only one minute. Tell Jesus that I want to be a man and a woman. Let others who are strange, Jesus, but for me, I will stay on your word, I will obey your word, I will do what your word says. I will preach your word, I will sing your word. Come on, lift your voice. Don't wait for anyone to pray for you. Don't wait for anyone to pray for you. If that is you, raise your hand up straight, close your eyes and tell Jesus. He's right where you are. Jesus is right where you are. If you are raising your hand, raise it straight. Raise it straight, a hundred percent to Jesus. Don't whisper, just open up. Talk to Jesus like you talk to your friend. Just, just talk to Jesus the way you talk to your father. 